English, but there's Chinese um, uh, under there. This is uh, the Ad Magnum uh, technology. Uh, it's a regeneration technology, it's voltage driven, just like the pacemaker. And it was basically developed like uh, the pacemaker for the modern nerve. Uh, it was founded by the multiple sclerosis society in uh, uh, earlier on. Now, what does it do? What does the ad magnum do? The ad magnum is like going to the gym. Instead of going to the gym, you do the ad magnum. It's as simple as that. So one treatment is like one month on the gym. Uh, for the average person, not people that go to the gym, of course, they're experienced gym goers, but the average person, one treatment will be like one month in the gym. So 10 treatments are like 10 months in the gym. What it does, it burns fat as an energy source to basically build the muscle. And you expect a slimmer, more athletic body after a package of 10 treatments. Now, how it was developed? Uh, it was invented by the co-inventor of the pacemaker. As I said, it was funded by the Multiple Sclerosis Society. They thought that they can create a device that's gonna be like a, a pacemaker uh, for multiple sclerosis, like it's going to replace the signal of the modern nerve. And it was manufactured, initially it was built in London University and then manufactured at the Innova Science Park in the UK, which is funded by the European Communion. He has, uh, it's cleared, uh, uh, 510K cleared by the FDA. Um, it's cleared for muscle conditioning, which is basically muscle building. And uh, that's uh, another uh, part of the uh, FDA um, website where the Iron Magnum is uh, located. And it has a number of certificates. It has uh, ISO, which is the certificate for the uh, uh, company and the good standing manufacturing. And it has the CE certificate of uh, universal safety. And that is again from UB Innovation Studies Manufacturing Act. Now, this is the question. Should you exercise or not exercise? And we have the picture of an athlete here. You're sweating and somebody who's just sitting there with uh, their cocktail kind of doing the iron magnum. Of course, I have to say that if you combine both, you will get much, much better results. But for the lazy ones like myself and other people perhaps in this audience, uh, this is, I guess, the solution. So how, what does that mean to do uh, iron magnum treatment? Why is it like exercise? Is it just going to the gym that you lose the weight and you build the muscle? No, it's the hormones that do the work because people that are deficient in growth hormone or thyroid hormone, for example, no matter how long they exercise, they don't lose, uh, um, they don't build the muscle, they don't lose the fat. So exercise is not the whole story. So here you have gain without pain because basically what the iron magnum does, it mimics the signal of the motor nerve and it increases the secretion of the hormones. And how does it do it? It goes from the signal of the nerve, the motor nerve goes to the brain. So basically what the iron magnum does, it gives a signal from the outside, it amplifies the signal of the motor nerve the, via resonance. The way two waves meet and they make a bigger wave, pretty much. So from the motor nerve, it goes to the brain, the brain will give the uh, instructions to pituitary, to um, hypothalamus, the pituitary gland, the thyroid, to kind of release the thyroid, and of course, also the growth hormone, which will become IGF-1 in the muscle, the thyroid will become T3, uh, T4, then T3, to burn the fat, and uh, the IGF-1 will build the muscle. So again, iron magnum, motor nerve, then it goes to the brain, pituitary, thyroid hormones, growth hormones. It also secretes DHEA, you'll, find, you'll see later the testosterone, we have found evidence for that. And that reinforces the immune system and increases bone density and collagen. Um, so the growth hormone is the muscle tone in building and the T3 is the lipolysis. The lipolysis is basically an effect, a, 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 a sort of a, a reason for the muscle building to occur, it gives the energy for the muscle building to occur. And again, this is a diagram of how it goes 
from the motor nerve to the brain, and then it the, burns the fat and builds the muscle and burns the fat as an energy source pretty much. Ion Magnum, now with other technologies, lasers and cryolysis that burn the fat, and the problem with it is as the fat uh, contents like the, the glucose, the lipids, and the toxins enter the bloodstream could clog the arteries. Well, here, it's a stepwise process. You just burn as much fat as is necessary to build the muscle. You don't just burn fat indiscriminately. And plus, you build muscle, which you cannot do with other techniques like uh, cryolysis. So Iron Magnum is basically like a, past, a fast paced, effortless exercise that increases the hormones and enhances your health. Just like exercise does. So, but instead of for exercise, you use the Iron Magnum. And again, it was made for people with multiple sclerosis that could not exercise. So it can be used in a number of uh, uh, people, of course, healthy individuals that are very lazy, or people on statins that cannot exercise, or very fat people that don't want, don't feel like exercising, and so on and so forth. Now, the, one of the main advantages of the iron macron is that it helps reducing visceral fat, which is not the case with uh, other uh, techniques, and we cannot do cryolysis or laser on uh, visceral fat because you could damage the uh, vital organs. Experimental results, the, uh, we did uh, an um, MRI study with the ion magnum, and what we found was a significant uh, decrease of visceral fat, uh, and this is uh, a probability level of the 0.001, quite significant. Uh, it also showed a significant decrease of subcutaneous fat, again, a very high significance level. Triglyceride levels was also decreased, a very important aspect of health. You, need, you don't want triglycerides in the system. And MRI results also showed an increased muscle mass. Basically, it burns the fat as an energy source to build the muscle. But it has some other benefits. Like, for example, IGF-1 was significantly increased and T3 levels were also significantly increased. It also increased the HEA, which was something that was an exciting and kind of surprising result. Um, and it also increased testosterone to people that were deficient in testosterone. So uh, we don't, don't expect to grow more hair if you are a normal uh, subject that has uh, normal testosterone levels. Now, another advantage of the ion magnum is that it separates the red blood cells. So it increases, um, it increases blood flow, pretty much. So it's a little bit like a Viagra kind of thing. We have had uh, doctors who have reported an uh, increase in sexual function, and it's basically because it separates the red blood cells, pretty much. And this is the results of the study. As you can see before treatment, there was mostly erythrocyte aggregation, which is when the blood cells are extremely close to each other. And uh, after the uh, six ion magnet treatments, you had a mostly erythrocyte separation. And I'll show you what this looks like. This is the before and this is the after of uh, subject 19. And this is the before and the after of subject 10. We had 19 subjects in the study. Now, this is the problems with lasers. And again, you can do a laser to get the fat out, and then you can use the iron button to basically uh, tone the skin and tone the body. So you can combine treatments. And of course, you can get a much faster lipolysis with a laser than you would get with the iron button. The problem, you know, this lumpiness and uh, bruising, all that can be again corrected with uh, the iron magnet treatment. So it's good to combine with different other treatments. Plastic surgery, again, the scarring is going to be reduced after the iron magnet, and of course the muscle is going to be built. So it's recommended that you can be used with plastic surgery as well. Now, there are problems with laser and radio frequency treatments as a long-term uh, problems that could happen. And there is some researchers that report increased inflammation after laser treatments, and this is their names. 
And there were researchers who found an increased inflammation at a radio frequency, and that is the name. With, with the iron magnet, we have a decrease in inflammation, which is again another advantage of uh, the procedure. Inflammation has been associated with a number of uh, medical disorders as well as aging. So having a, a device that can reduce the inflammation is an advantage in that particular area. This is uh, the results of the Iron Magnum from Slim Express in India. They did the clinical studies uh, and I will show you uh, some of the results also shows that uh, there was a um, uh, decrease of visceral fat and also an, in, in, an increased uh, uh, level of health in terms of the diabetic status of these patients. Uh, this is from Indonesia, the before and after. Um, as you can see, this scar is also has been reduced and has been improved somewhat after the treatment. It's a long-term scar, so it's not gonna go away completely with this particular devices anyway. Uh, this is from India, before and after. And this is from Singapore. This is actually only for treatments, and it's, that's a younger individual. So the younger the person, the faster and better the results. The older the uh, person, the uh, much, much more slower the results. And if someone is diabetic or hypothyroid, is gonna need a lot more treatments. Again, there is no miracle situation here, but it is like exercise. And instead of going for an exercise, you do the iron magnum instead. This is uh, the before and after with on someone's leg. Uh, it's 12 treatments, and you can see a significant decrease, you know, much slimmer legs, much more um, tighter. The, the, the muscle is tighter. This is only after six treatments. There is uh, some improvement, quite a bit of improvement there. And this is uh, it. Thank you very much. Any questions? Could you please uh, explain again uh, the exact mechanism of action? So what I understood is it uh, it provides an electrical uh, input in the muscle, and uh, you suppose that it goes uh, retrogradely uh, yeah. through the nerves. Uh -huh. Okay, yeah. what it does is that the co-inventor of the pacemaker, basically <laughs> what he did, is he uh, took different nerves, motor nerves, and he tried to rebuild the signal of the motor nerve. That's what he did. So he, the, the signal of the motor nerve is now rebuilt, unlimited resolution, because that device is completely, it has no computer in it. It's made by hand. So it's a limited resolution, it's the signal of the motor nerve. You put it transcutaneously and you push it in to the system via voltage. The way, uh, you've heard needless vaccination, like vaccination without needles? Yes. Okay, so this is what they do. They just have a gun and they push the uh, vaccine through the skin via voltage. Here you push the signal with voltage. Well, that signal is gonna go to the motor nerve. They, when two signals are met, and they are similar, they resonate. When resonance occurs, it's like two waves meeting and making a bigger wave. So basically it amplifies the signal of the motor nerve. This is what exercise is. But during exercise, the signal of the motor nerve is amplified. <laughs> so, that, uh, so basically you create this amplification of the signal of the motor nerve without exercise, and it goes to the brain, it starts releasing the hormones as if you were exercising. But because you don't get any oxygen involved, and you don't, you're never out of breath because you're just sitting there, and this goes on and on and on, you can have a much more intense exercise that you would have if you went to the gym. If you were an average person, you went to the gym, you would exercise one hour, you would get tired, and then you would just leave. Here, it would be like exercising for, you know, five hours, for six hours. So it's a much higher, uh, result, much, it's much better effect, much faster effect, I should say. Of course, if you do the unmarked and then you exercise, some, for some reason, the results are even better. It just clicks somehow. But 
for people that cannot exercise, that they are obese, that they are on statins, that they don't want to exercise. I don't want to exercise. I don't, I don't have time to go to the gym. They just don't have time to go to the gym. It's a sort of a solution. It's effortless exercise. That's all it is. And it does what the exercise does, basically. That's what the exercise does. It releases hormones and you build muscle. But the the, there is no direct muscular fasciculation contraction, no. uh, so uh, the person yes. doesn't feel anything. Uh, you do feel something. You do. You might start feeling some contract at the different levels. That is the lower frequencies that work on visceral fat. You don't feel that because it's just much deeper. But at the lower, at higher level, there will be some muscle stimulation. But it's not what does the work. It's the hormones that do the work. The way. In gym, it's not the fact that you're exercising and you're moving your muscles, it's the fact that the body will release the hormones, and that's what uh, fills the muscle and basically burns the fat. And the data uh, that showed uh, the hormone release was done in uh, patients with uh, multiple sclerosis, or they were normal subjects? No, they were normal subjects, and none of them were diabetic. Um, we, uh, they, there was a sort of selection on the sample that did not have diabetic uh, subjects because they contaminate, they need more treatments because they don't respond as, as fast. So it was non-diabetic subjects. They were big, they have very high BMI, and there were 19 subjects, and they did 12 treatments. And for anyone who has uh, heart problems, uh, because I mean that was uh, pacemaker. You cannot. That's a, that's a contraindication. Okay. Contraindication is pacemaker. Sometimes we say epilepsy, although epilepsy doesn't seem to be a contraindication, but we say epilepsy. Or if they have a major disorder, to ask uh, uh, for a letter from their physician to find out uh, they can do it. But um, it doesn't. It doesn't seem to affect people with high blood pressure or anything like that. But people with pacemaker, the signals do con contradict each other for some reason. Because they're both voltage driven, you see. Mm -hmm. Is there any other question? No questions. Okay, thank okay. you very much.